thank you to those who have given and to those who could not give. We, we ask God's blessing that in future you will be able to, to give some to aid God's work here on earth. God bless you. This week, I don't need to ask you, which was the highlight, well, maybe I should, of the news. Something happened this week that captured our attention. Sister Ingrid, I heard you. The earthquake, yes, the earthquake, and it did also um, impact us. But, but something uh, happened locally. The sauna took place. And what was important at the sauna? State of disaster, Sister Evie. And what came out there was, and I think we all know this by now, that the SOEs are very important to government. And there's this one that stands out. Well, there are more than one that stands out. But we'll concentrate on the one. So, there, is, there are all of them that are really in need of special care and special attention. But we're not going to talk about the SOEs, and we know the one that I'm referring to is the one that makes it possible for us to see and to have our phones work. We're talking about ESCOM, obviously. And this, because it's so important, government decided to assign a special minister to see to these SOEs. Because their units, we know, they break down from time to time. I have um, lost track of which unit <laughs> is in repair now, Uncle, Uncle Vernia, I hear you laughing cynically. So we, we've kind of lost track, right? Um, but the important thing is that they are, in, they are extremely important in the daily running of our government. Today, I want to concentrate on units in life that are extremely important. And there are a, f a few, two, maybe more than that, units that are very important in life. And I wonder if you can perhaps think of a unit that is very important in life. Uncle Rowley? Family life. Uncle Rowley is always on top of everything. Family life is right. The family unit is extremely important. Very, very important in life. So important that God himself got involved. He wrote actually a manual for family life. And I would call it the COE of Christ. Christ, what does it stand for? SOE. Help me out. Yes, state-owned enterprises. This is Christ's own enterprise. It's the family, the family life. There's some, many others, but we'll concentrate today on the COE of family life, that unit we will concentrate on. You know, it is so important that God gave us direct instructions as to how to take care of this unit. And I'm going to have Sister Caitlin read our Bible text for the day. Our Bible text from this morning comes from Ephesians 6, verse 1 to 4, and it reads, Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother, 
This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. We've heard <clears throat> some of God's commandments being so important when it comes to his COEs. And Sister White writes about it and in the Adventist home. And I want to read to you what she writes, just a few extracts. Home is the heart of all our activity. Society is composed of families and is what the heads of families make it. Out of the heart are the issues of life and the heart of the community. We've heard a strong family builds strong communities, right? And then we go on and on and on. The well-being of society, what I've just said. The success of the church. The prosperity of a nation depends upon what? The home influence. The influence of the home. How many times do we not just almost disregard the home? And, and we forget that this is where it all starts. This is the core of our, of our life. We all started within the context of a family, be that a one-person-headed uh, family or, or uh, a dual-headed family. The sweetest type of heaven, she says, home should be made all that the word implies the sweetest type of home, of heaven. It should be a little heaven on earth, a place where the affections are cultivated instead of being studiously repressed. Then she goes on to say, the atmosphere surrounding the souls of fathers and mothers fills the whole house. To a large extent, we as parents create that atmosphere of the home circle. And when there is disagreement between mother and father, the children partake of the same spirit. Did you get that? If there are disagreements between the, the, the head of the household or the heads of the household, children latch onto it and they will partake of it. They feel it. Their emotions feel it. You don't even have to not have your discourse in front of them. You send out that energy that they feel and they, they almost capitalize on that. Make your home atmosphere fragrant with tender thoughtfulness before you start engaging. This unit of God is so important that even Dr. Google got into it. He got into the topic and, he's in a, and he writes, unity helps cultivate respect for both parents. Disunity can encourage disrespect of either or both parents. When kids see discord constantly between their parents, they often pick up on the roots of the disagreements. And if one parent is dismissive 
of the other. That attitude is passed on to the kids. And you might think it is nothing. Oh, I have my disagreements. Yes, I'm not saying that we won't have disagreements. And it is because we don't, we are all different. We think differently. We have different viewpoints, and it makes for good conversation in the home. But sometimes our differences can get so toxic that it filters through the whole house. Have you experienced that? That you come into a home and you can immediately feel something is, is a mess, something is not right, Uncle Bernie. You think kids are not clever. They pick up on it. And when they one day marry and become parents, they model after their parent homes. So let us be very, very careful as to how we go about treating and conversing in our homes. I am today going to highlight only five points that will help with the unity within the family context. But before I go any further, we have a special item of music. And we're going to have uh, a lady coming up and presenting to us in her beautiful voice the special item of music. It's out of your hands, you don't know you. Given God the problem, it's no longer up to you. You prayed a prayer of faith, and you're standing on God's truth while waiting for the answer. He's got a question for you. Thank you, sister, for that beautiful song that fits in so well. And let us make God the COE of our family unit. Okay, I said we're going to just highlight a few five points that will help with the unity of the family. 
Unity helps both parents build strong relationship with the kids. If you play good cop, bad cop, one of the parents loses. And if the same parent plays bad cop on a regular basis, it compounds the effect. It can cause long-term problems when one parent is consistently seen as good or friendlier to the kids than the other one. But when you are united, you both benefit from good decisions and you both share the responsibilities for the bad ones. You facilitate family unity too. So being together, taking responsibility together, a force together is stronger than when they see it is not the case. You have one good, one bad. Doesn't work for unity in the family. Number two, unity helps cultivate respect for both parents. This unity can encourage disrespect of either or both parents. When kids see discord constantly between their parents, they often pick up on the roots of the dis disagreement. And if one parent is dismissive of the other, that attitude is passed on to the kids. Unity, however, even when there might be disagreements in the decision-making process, forces the kids to deal with a united front. It's easier to respect a united front. I find this very interesting. Sister White writes about unity in the family long before Dr. Google. Dr. Google comes now and she and it's almost as if she capitalizes on what Sister White wrote so many years ago. So I would encourage you to read the books that Sister White had written. Then there is unity number three of parents help build the character of kids. When a couple is united on tough decisions, a child's character will benefit. It says like water seeks to run to a low point, kids will gravitate to that low path of least resistance. If they can manipulate the parents to get their way, it encourages the kids always to work to beat the system rather than to build their character. But when the couple is united on tough decisions, such as on issues of discipline, virtues like honesty and integrity, a child's character is strengthened. Number four, unity models healthy marriage dynamics for your children. Disagreements are inevitable in parenting, but when we handle those conflicts in a healthy, respectful way, the kids see what they need to desire and be like when they are married later. Even if you don't always agree with your spouse, backing each other shows us and other shows up, backing each other up, sorry, backing each other up shows your kids that you respect each other. That's very important. Respect for each other very important, and kids need to see that. 
And if you are not sure about your spouse's position on the matter, tell your children. You want to check with your with their mom or their dad first and that you'll get back to them. Don't say, ah, oh, you know what? Forget about what dad said or forget about what mom say. I say da 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 da, which is totally the opposite of what the other parents said. Family unit family unity holds a stronger marriage together for now, but more importantly, for later. Now, there are some times when, when the marriage do not go well and you have to each go your separate ways, and we're not talking about that. We are now just talking about how you parent together now will affect how you love and live together down the road. If you allow the parenting years to be filled with constant discord, arguments, put down, or surrender caused by disagreements, especially if you do that in front of the kids, you'll be chipping away at the peace and harmony you'll want and need when the house is empty. Ask those people, those of us who have the empty nest syndrome. Try to have a long-term view of not only your relationship with your kids, but the relationship with your spouse. Now this is just what, five points that I've mentioned. There are so much more that we can talk about, but time does not allow us. Um, I think we need a whole afternoon, really, if we want to do justice to this topic, because it doesn't only, this unity does not only affect the atmosphere, but it can have an effect on your emotional state. And that can run into major, major issues for you later down the line. And you wonder, but why we have things gone wrong? Now, this is not an indictment to if, if parents or if kids really uh, Sometimes it is a medical problem that, that comes to the fore. So one shouldn't be so hard on yourself when these things do happen. But if you try your best and you think of the future ahead, I think we will be in good standing with our own mind, our own conscience for the future. So there we have just a few points that we have raised for you in terms of um, the family and unity within the family. And I hope that we will take it to heart that the family unit is very, very important. Be that as it is headed by a single parent or by both parents. And I pray that God will bless us as we raise our kids very, very important job that we have. And we don't have a manual for that. We don't go to the university to, to study and, and, and get a degree in parenting. Unfortunately not. Our kids go out into the world and they um, represent us. Sometimes, as I say, when a child is old, they do their own, they make their own decisions and really then you cannot take responsibility for what they, they do in later years, but at least you can feel at ease in your mind you have done your part. God bless us as we raise our families in fear of the Lord. God bless you. Um, shall we have our closing prayer? It will be done by Sister, uh, by Elder, our oh. Our Lady Elder, she will have the closing prayer and then we'll have the separation song hymn. Good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Sister Lins and Sister Caitlin, for reminding us of the importance of the unity in the family. And may God bless us as we 
prayerfully ask God daily to guide us and lead us into his ways. Can we all stand for our closing prayer? All the praise and the glory and the honor to you, Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord, that we can be found this morning in your house of worship, praising you, worshiping you. And Lord, thank you for leading out in the family unit. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to you and Amen. ask you for guidance to lead us to give us that insight, that wisdom, that understanding how to be a parent. Amen. Help us, Lord, to set the example. And Lord, as we're going to study your word now, open our hearts and our minds for thy word. Bless those who are going to present it to us. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.